Hello and welcome to the Tottenham America channel. Today we will be reacting to Tottenham Hotspur's late, late 2-1 win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as a 90 plus 6th minute Brennan Johnson winner assisted by Hyunmin Son on his return sealed the three points for Tottenham in a display that was for a lot of the time unconvincing but for um, the other half of the time very, very scintillating. Um, we went into the game with probably one of the strongest lineups we could have put out, uh, barring the fact that Son was not starting. We had almost all of our players back. We had Vicario in goal, um, our back line as normal with Poro, Romero, Van de Veni, Doggy. Saar and Bentancur in midfield. Saar making his first start after the AFCON tournament. Um, James Madison was back in full flow in the attacking midfielder. Kulisewski and Werner and Rich Harlison. So we are basically almost at full strength. Um, but honestly, for a lot of the first half, we struggled. Yeah, honestly, it wasn't our defending. Our defending was, we were defending very well. I think it was more our midfield. Ben Tanker was making some costly mistakes. Yeah, which um, one of them led to the penalty. Yeah, then? one of them led to the penalty. I wouldn't, Mickey Van Deven was the one that made the challenge, but I would say the blame would fall more on Ben Tanker since he put our defense in such a bad position on, lo on losing the ball right at the edge of the box. Um, Saar was very good throughout the match, moving the ball very well. Brilliantly taken goal. Um, ben Tucker has still not looked as quick and smooth on his feet as he has since before his ACL yeah, injury. I he's think still, he's still recovering. He's still, yeah, he's definitely yeah. still recovering from that. Madison did very well today. I think he picked some great passes, which is what we've been missing from him for so long. And um, after Son came on, seeing Madison and Son work together was so good, especially for that last goal where Madison linked up with Charleston and then with Charleston to Son, Son to Brendan Johnson. That yeah. was the perfect display of what Ange Postacoglu wants our team to play. Yeah, and it was the first time that game that we actually got it right. I think the Sar goal was also somewhat like that, but it was more based on that brilliance that passed from Kulisewski. Um, end of the first half, we dominated the game, but we just could not find a breakthrough. Like... We were, um, had full possession. I don't think Brighton even stepped into our half once from, like, the 37th minute onwards. But we just could not break through. Um, went to halftime, and then we started to come out firing. And the one guy who surprised me in the second half was Kulusevski. He looked like his old self. He looked like a winger Yeah, he was again. playing very well. I'm surprised. I was surprised to see him being taken off. Yeah, um, definitely. He could have stayed was, on. Yeah. But honestly, Brendan Johnson bringing out on that pace and him scoring the winner. Yeah. I guess you don't regret it. But... For Kulisevsky, you know, he would probably want him to stay on because he probably knew he was playing very well. But I think this also gives us hope because for a while, I think we a lot of fans were saying, oh, Kulusevsky is much better in the attacking midfield position, but that's where Madison operates, so what, what happens to our wingers? So him putting out this performance on the wings today is good reason to say that Kulusevsky is still going to be good on the wings and Madison can still hold a spot in the attacking midfielder position. Um, <clears throat> and then Saar got the goal. And it was a really well taken goal. The pass from Kulusevski was beautiful. Into Saar. Uh, tried to play it across to Richarlison. But Lewis Dunk gets an incredible foot on it. Somehow rebounds against the post. And then Saar, basically from the touchline, curls it with his left foot into the back of the net. And Tottenham are level and the place is booming. I haven't heard that sound since before the Chelsea game. Yeah, and then we made those three substitutions. Um... Who was Son, Bissouma, and Johnson yeah. on for Kulisevsky, so, Bentancur, and Werner. Honestly, I think, I think Werner and Bentancur were the right moves. That's Bentancur what I was gonna especially. Say, yeah. Werner, Werner, is, Werner was playing well, mm -hmm. but we know he gets tired easily. He's, he's, not, still, he's definitely not going to yeah, play the full he's 90. He's still building up his he was, he's, yeah. he was playing very well, though. He's very, very well. Best, our best attacker in the first half, I think, was yeah, Timo yeah, Werner. Yeah, definitely Timo Werner. Um, Bentancur, obviously, we still have to gauge his comeback. I think that ACL injury really, really killed him. He's not going to be back right away. It's going to take time like this. So that was a good move. I just don't get the Kulusevsky substitution. Kulusevsky, I get one and get Son on. Son and Basuma made a difference. Yeah, they made game. a big difference. Kulusevsky, I just don't understand why we brought on Johnson because we struggled down that right side. De and, we definitely did. Okay, around that time was when Poro got injured. Now, I don't know what's going through Ange's mind. I, I don't know if he saw that it would give me like a short-term injury and he'd get over it in the match. But my initial reaction was like, okay, if... Kulusevski was still on, we'd have more defensive contribution on that right side. So it's fine to leave Poro on because he'd have help. We had Brennan Johnson. Brennan Johnson doesn't defend. 
He's like a te he doesn't defend. We know that about him. So putting po everything on an injured Poro who can barely walk on his right foot for about 10 minutes was probably the biggest problem that let Brighton creep into yeah, the game. And then we went on to take Udogi off, who for Ben Davies, who Ben Udogi looked perfectly fine. Yeah, probably could have. I, the whole I match. okay, that one made sense because I think he was not moving very well. I don't understand the Saar for Hoybeer situation. Well, I mean, I do get that. Saar just came back. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just came back, actually, though. No, it's He's been, been here. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while. And I, like, ho repeatedly we see, like... Hoybeer making mistakes exactly. late in the game. Yeah. So I just don't understand why we would choose to bring on Hoybeer ahead of... Why why, why couldn't we replace Poro? Yeah. yeah like, like, and keep Saar on. Saar and Basuma are doing fine. They were killing it in midfield. So I'm just still... Unless it's a fatigue thing again. But Saar... I, I, I don't know. There, there's got to be some reason behind it. Um, but that l set us up for a really, really bad last, like, 10 minutes. Yeah, like, definitely did. Brighton were killing us all over the pitch, and we had no way to get forward then at all. Then we had that one break. Madison played an exquisite pass to Richarlison. Yep. Brought it out of his feet brilliantly. Uh, released Son down the left-hand side. We really missed his pace, and yeah. that, like, explosive yep. run, and then that ball into the box. Yeah. It's powerful. I know, I'm like, I'm not hating on Werner. Werner, obviously, he played well, yeah. but his balls are not the same thing as Son. Yeah. They're not going to be... I think be... it's because Werner is a striker. He's running like a striker. Son is running like a winger. Yeah, Son knows also... how to operate there. Werner's learning. But that, that ball into the box from Son, that curled low with power. So good. We missed that so badly. So good. It was like, like, that's, like, you don't realize what Son brings to the team until you replace him with someone else. It's like, wow, we've been missing out, yeah. right? So I think, um... We missed him a lot. I'm very glad to have him back. And looking forward to the games we have ahead. Wolves, Crystal Palace, um, Aston Villa is going to be tough. But then we got Fulham, Luton, West Ham, and Nottingham Forest. Aston That's Villa a run will of... be a very important match. Because yeah. it's lo it looks like we're fighting with them right yeah. now for the top four spot. Exactly. And a lot depends on tomorrow's game. Aston, Aston Villa versus yeah. Manchester United. There's a six, uh, eight-point gap between... Um, Manchester United and Aston Villa, so there's no really competition between uh, those two teams uh, in terms of like one of them switching with each other. But I think our best interest would probably be a Manchester United win tomorrow, just so that Aston Villa get held back on points well, a little even bit. If Man United start start do because they have been gaining momentum. Yeah. For us, maybe this best a draw. Uh, yeah, draw. A draw. Yeah. A draw. That's that's a good outcome. Um, our next game is against Wolves. Mm, we've got all our players back, basically. Wolves at home um, as well. I believe. Wolves at home, yeah, it is at home. I think, I think, I think, if we don't make the same mistakes we made today, if Son starts, I think we'll have a different. Yeah, story. they're also they're also off of the back of a two 0 loss to Brentford, where a former Spurs player and Sergio Reguilon just pretty much gave them the biggest match class ever. Yeah, I think um, Reguilon was one of their best players. He got an assist. Uh, I don't know if that's his debut. I think he's played a couple games for them. But um, nonetheless, it seems like he played well. Uh, so they killed Wolves 2-0, and then Tottenham will play them next weekend. It's going to be certainly an interesting one to watch. Um, but that's it for our reaction to Tottenham's 2-1 late, late win over Brighton and Hove Albion in the Premier League. If you enjoyed and want to see more Spurs content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below your thoughts on this game. And until next time, come on, you Spurs!